us pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for your great love and blessing over our lives. I pray that you will bless our this prayer service tonight. And please give us a heart of wisdom to hear your voice so we may learn more about you. Thank you, Jesus, and please forgive us for our sins. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.
Sabbath, friends. I'm Rianne from the Mount Zion Light Bears Adventure Club. Have you ever seen someone really, really tall? The tallest person I ever saw was my Uncle Rami. Here's a picture of a very tall boy named Ring Kuat. He lives in Sudan, Africa. When Ring was just 15 years old, he was already 8 feet 4 inches tall. Look how much taller he is than his friends. I wonder how tall he will be by the time he's a man. Another very tall person was named Robert Wadlow. When Robert was born, he was a normal size for a baby. But by the time he was six months old, he weighed 30 pounds, as much as a two-year-old child. When Robert was eight years old, he was six feet two inches tall. This is taller than most grown men. This picture is of Robert when he was 13 years old. He was seven feet four inches tall. He is standing next to a grown man. Robert kept growing. Here's a picture of him when he was 20 years old. He is standing next to a hotel clerk. The people at the hotel had to put two big beds together to make a bed that was long enough for Robert. When Robert finally finished growing, he was almost nine feet tall. He weighed 490 pounds. He was too tall to be able to stand up straight in many houses. Even though Robert Wadlow was so big, he was very kind and loving. He especially loved his mother. People called him the gentle giant. Giants are not always gentle. Back in Bible times, the giants were often fierce and cruel. Most people were terribly afraid of giants. Even brave soldiers were afraid of them. If an army had a giant or two on their side, they are almost certain to win. A hidden tribe called the Philistines had a giant in their army. He, his name was Goliath. Goliath stood over nine feet tall. He carried an enormous sword and spear. Goliath wore a thick, strong coat of armor. No arrow or dart could possibly get through it. Goliath even had armor on his head. Only a small space on his face had no armor. Goliath was mean and cruel. He hated God. He wanted to hurt and kill God's people. The Philistine army set up a camp on a hill. God's people, the Israelites, camped on another hill. Every day, Goliath put on his armor. Then he picked up his sword and his spear. Then he marched down into a valley between the two hills. He shouted out, Choose a man from among you. Let him come down and fight me. If he can kill me, then, he will be your, then we will be your servants. But if I kill him, then you will be our servants. The Israelites trembled with fear. Even the king was afraid. Who could win a fight against such a huge giant? Somehow, God's people forgot that God was their help in trouble. Every day for 40 days, the Israelites trembled when they saw giant Goliath. Far away from battle, a boy named David took care of his father's sheep. Although David was just a boy, he was very brave. Once, a bear tried to hurt the sheep. David put a rock in his sling and killed the bear. Another time, a lion tried to steal a sheep, and David killed the lion. David was brave because he remembered that God was his help in trouble. David was just a boy but God had chosen him to be the king someday. Of course, David wasn't the king yet. He was still a shepherd boy. Three of David's brothers were in the war against the Philistines. David missed his brothers. He wondered how they were doing. Maybe they were hungry. Maybe they had been captured by the Philistines, or maybe they were even dead. David's father worried about the boys too. One day, he called David to him. He told David, I want to send some food to your brothers. Please take it to them. Then come back and tell me how they are doing. Early the next morning, David set off to find his brothers. He walked a long time in the hot sun. Finally, he reached a battlefield. David began looking for his brothers. He walked up and down the rows of soldiers. Finally, he found his brothers. David was happy to see them. 
Just then, a huge voice roared across the valley. It shouted terrible words against God and his people. David looked down into the valley and saw a giant. Every time the giant stepped, the ground shook like an earthquake. David asked, who's that? A soldier told him, it's Goliath, run fast before he kills you. David looked around. All the Israelite soldiers were running back to their tents. David called, wait, why are you letting him say such terrible things? We don't need to be afraid. Someone told King Saul what David had said. The king sent for David. David told King Saul, God is stronger than that giant. If no one else is willing, I'll fight the giant myself. King Saul could hardly believe his ears. He told David, you're just a boy. What makes you think you could fight a giant? David told him, the Lord helped me kill a bear and a lion. I'm sure he can deliver me from that wicked Philistine. The king finally decided to let David try. At first, Saul tried to get David to wear some armor, but it was too big and heavy for him. David said, I don't need the armor. The Lord is my strength and my shield. David walked down into the valley. When he came to a little brook, he picked up five smooth round stones. Then he marched toward giant Goliath. When Goliath saw David, his face turned red with anger. He shouted, what are you doing? Do you think I'm a dog? Come over here, boy. I'll feed you to the birds and the beasts. David kept walking toward the giant. He shouted a message back to Goliath. You come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. The Philistine soldiers laughed. They knew that a young boy could never win against Goliath. The Israelite soldiers trembled. Surely David would be killed. Then what would happen? Would they all become slaves of the Philistines? But David did not seem afraid. He told Goliath, The Lord does not save with swords and spears. He will give us the victory. That was too much for Goliath. He roared with anger. He grabbed up his spear. He pointed it at David and started running toward him. But David did not run. Instead, he quickly put a stone in his sling. He swung the sling round and around. At just the right moment, David let the stone fly toward the giant. But how could one small stone bother a giant? How could it hurt a giant all covered with armor? Whirr! God guided the stone as it flew into the air. Thwack! The stone hit Goliath right in the forehead. Right in a little small spot, there was no armor. Goliath groaned. He dropped his spear. He stumbled and then fell to the ground. In a few minutes, the mighty giant was dead. Now the Israelite soldiers were not afraid anymore. Their terrible enemy was dead. Now they were full of courage. And now the Philistine soldiers were not laughing anymore. When Goliath dead, they were afraid. They'd even tried to fight. They just started to run. The Israelites Lights chased them all the way back to their own country. David won against the giant because he trusted God. David did the small part and God did his big part. Together, they were much stronger than the biggest, strongest giant. God gave David the victory over Goliath. He wants to give us victory over the giants in our lives today. We all have giants that bother us. I'm not talking about huge soldiers like Goliath. I'm talking about things that make us afraid or unhappy or worried. Satan likes to bother us with these giants. He knows that they can keep us from being ready when Jesus comes. The biggest giant of all is sin. Satan tells us that we cannot obey God, but that is a lie. The Bible tells us the truth. It says, thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 15:57. Isn't that wonderful news? Let's read together. 
Thanks be to God, who gives us the victory for our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 15, 57. Thanks be to God. No one else is big or strong enough to give us the victory over sin and Satan. Let's all say it together. Thanks be to God. God gives us many things. He gives us life and health. He gives us hope. He gives us happiness. He gives us eternal life. 1 Corinthians 15, 57 tells us of one other special gift. This gift starts with the letter V. What is it? Yes, God gives us victory. He helps us win sin and Satan. That's why 1 Corinthians 15, 57 says, Thanks be to God, who gives us the victory for our Lord Jesus Christ. You fill in the missing word. Thanks be to God, who gives us the for our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 15, 57. Now see the whole verse of me. Thanks be to God, who gives us the victory for our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 15, 57. God gives us the victory. For whom? Say it with me. For our Lord Jesus Christ. He gives us the victory for our Lord Jesus Christ. As I see the verse, I will stop several times. Whenever I stop, you see the next word of the verse. Thanks be to who, us, the, through our, Jesus Christ. First, 15. Very good. Now say all the words with me. Thanks be to God, who gives us a victory for our Lord Jesus Christ. First Corinthians 15, 57. Good. This wonderful verse is full of hope. Here are all the first letters of each word. Let's say the verse together. Thanks be to God, who gives us the victory for our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 15, 57. Let's say it again. Thanks be to God, who gives us the victory for our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 15, 57. I hope you always remember that God gives victory. Say it with me. God gives me victory. Giant Goliath was big and boastful and mean. When he shouted at the Israelite soldiers, they were afraid. Even though the Israelites were in God's army, they began to think, we're too weak. We, God can't save us from such a big giant. We are going to die. Did you know that Satan does the same sort of thing to us today? He tells us, you're so bad. God can never save you. Soon, God will judge you. He's going to cross your name out of the book of life. You sinned, and you will die forever. It is true that we have all sinned. We have all done wrong things, but God wants, us, wants to give us victory. God wants to save us from sin. In fact, that is why he sent his son, Jesus, to this world. He sent him to save us from our sins. Jesus wants to give us new hearts that love to obey him. He says, a new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. Ezekiel 36, 26. Our old hearts are full of selfishness and sin. They're all not happy hearts. Jesus offers us a heart filled with good things from his own heart. Things like love, joy, peace, patience, and obedience. It is also true that we must each be judged. When Jesus looks at our records, he will see everything we have done. He will see the good and the bad things. The Bible says God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it good or bad. Ecclesiastes 12, 14. When we ask Jesus to forgive us, and when we allow Jesus to give us a victory, we have nothing to fear. Jesus will tell God the Father, I died on the cross to pay for that girl's sins. I took all her sins and gave her my goodness, my righteousness. She can be in our kingdom because I have given her the victory. Or he will say, I love that boy so much, I took the punishment for his sins. He asked me to forgive him, and I did. His sins are gone. And now he has my goodness. We can allow him to be in our kingdom because he no longer listens to Satan. I've given him the victory. I've saved him from his sins. 
Then, when God looks at us, He does not see our sins. Instead, He sees the perfect goodness of Jesus. He seems Jesus' righteousness. Isn't that good news? Isn't that good news? Isn't that good news? Yes, it is good news. In fact, this is what we call the gospel. We cannot possibly win a fight against Satan. We are not strong enough, but Jesus is strong. We can tell Jesus, I want that sin to die. Thank you for giving me that victory. As we turn from our sins with our feeble little strength, Jesus gives us all the strength we need to have the victory. Are there some giants in your life? Maybe you have done the same wrong things over and over again. Maybe you fear that you can never be good enough to be saved. Maybe you are afraid of the judgment. If so, remember the good news of the gospel. You can tell Jesus all your secrets and heartaches and fears. You can confess your sins. You can ask Jesus to give you his righteousness. Jesus will hear that prayer and he will give you victory. This is what I want. This is why I ask Jesus every day to give me his victory. If you want Jesus' righteousness in your life too, please join me in prayer. Dear Lord, we have done many wrong things. We want to be free of Satan and sin. We want to have the strength to do what is right. Tonight, we ask you to take away our sins. Please take away our sinful hearts and fill us with Jesus' righteousness. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen.